Welcome back to another episode of the Virtual Jam Podcast. I apologize. Uh, we weren't with you last week. It's summer, and that means vacations and time off. And whoopsies, you know, we missed one. So we are back, though, and I thought... Since we were bad and missed a week, we better bring like the best guest ever. And so we've got Audrey Yates, the VP of Hotel Partnerships at one of our favorite companies, Stash Rewards. Audrey, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. I mean, that's quite the intro. I better really live up to that. Jeez. I'm just trying to get those sponsorship dollars, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, tell, tell Jeff how good this did, and then he can sponsor us officially. Uh, and true virtual jam fashion, obviously, we're going to kick off with a segue. Uh, Meg, you can get started. I'll go, and then we'll let Audrey finish it out. But uh, what is your segue? Okay, well, I'm going to start personal. Yeah, you are. And we went to Disneyland on the 4th of July, and we celebrated Cash's birthday, and it was magical. It was awesome being there. Um, so that was recent. And then my business, we just took the Central Block Live, which Damn is it. very exciting. That's what I was going to say. Uh, so this is their first weekend opened. And yeah, they're filling up fast. Okay. Well, my personal. Well, that makes me happy, though, too, yes. because that also affects me. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Uh, so I'll do it in the reverse. Personal best, uh, the Central Block. Check it out, thecentralblock.com. A really cool new property in Bend, Oregon. Uh, if you're going to book it, I recommend booking with your stash rewards points. It is a stash property. Um, so cool. Uh, Bend looks to be amazing. Full disclosure, I haven't been, but oh. from what I've seen online, it looks amazing. Audrey said it's one of her favorite cities in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, so Megan and I were just talking last night, like we got to get out there. It just looks incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. Spe it's nice in the summer and the winter. You can go either time and do completely different things and it's magical both times. Yeah. I'm looking forward to having a property that has like more, a longer time yeah. of peak season because they've got offerings at both times. And we'll actually be in your neck of the woods, Audrey. We're leaving for Spokane, Washington. Uh on Tuesday next week and then driving up to a lake house uh, um, in Idaho is where it's at, right? Uh -huh. yeah. So that would be like my, since you took Disneyland, I'll use a future segue for my sure. personal, mm -hmm. but really excited to do that. Excited to get out of the heat, excited to be by the water and it just looks magical. So I can't wait. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Personal. Okay. This is, well, this, I don't know. It works for me. You guys, will, your kids are not quite as old as mine, but my almost 14 year old flew by herself for wow. the first time. Um, this, she left Tuesday and she flew to Orlando because my sister and my niece and my brother in law live there now. And it was just one of those mom moments where you're like, I have raised this child to be able to be comfortable. With, she didn't, we didn't have to do like the unaccompanied minor or anything. First time she's ever done it. She's flown a bunch, but. Um, but she got right on that plane and she was like, bye, and got off on the other end. It was like, no problems. Made friends with her seatmates like her mother does every time. Uh, so I would, yeah, I just think that like was you. one of those like heart swelling mom moments where you're like, my kids are getting old enough to do these things and it's bittersweet. I don't know. Did was, she have a layover? No. So she just went direct, That's um, nice. which was nice, but you know, six hours on a plane by yourself. Yeah. And she was like. But she's also a teenager, so she got the free Wi-Fi and then just probably was on TikTok for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> Endless scroll. Endless scrolling. Um, okay, and then business. So actually, we have a, um, I'm not going to say who because the agreement's not out yet. We're back yet. But um, I have been working with a hotel, phenomenal hotel in Oregon. That's all I'm going to say. Um, that I have been working with them for almost three years to get wow. them to... Wow to this point because they've had a lot of turnover. They had a fire um, a year and a half ago that took out a lot of their um, kind of um, space that they, I don't know, it's, it wasn't the hotel part anyways. Um, a lot of, some changeover, but like just consistency. And it is so phenomenal. And when I tell you guys about it, you're going to be like, oh my God, that's amazing. Um, but they have an agreement out. So three years um, of, you know, just kind of friendship and consistency and um, knowing they needed some time and then keeping on it. And we are really, really excited to welcome them to the Stash family. So that's a pretty big one for me. That's super cool. Three yeah, years. I'm that's excited yeah. to hear who a lot of time coming. Yes. So I wanted to talk on this episode. Of course, we'll talk about Stash and what makes that great. And all of our listeners know we're, we're big advocates of Stash. We love it. 
Uh, but I think what I want to talk about is the power of networking, because whether you're in hospitality or you're in business or just in life in general, really, networking is one of the most powerful tools that exist to build relationships and opportunities. And Audrey is probably the best networker that I've ever met. And if it wasn't for networking, we wouldn't know about Stash or properties wouldn't be on Stash. Like none of that would have existed. And so I'd love to hear your story, Audrey, as how you've really like focused in and become such a great networker. Yeah. So I, you know, I still tell your story because well, for one, it was like one of the best compliments, but it's when I found Vibrant, um, you know, I cold emailed you. And yeah. There's a LinkedIn message. Oh no, it was yeah. an email. It was an email. You no, said it was I, an email. It was right. an email. Yeah. You're right. Um, I actually hate LinkedIn messages. I am, oh, like, it's I don't the like, worst. Like, I don't like to cold call. Pat and Frank like to cold call. I don't like to cold call. I don't like, I sometimes I'll do a LinkedIn message. I'll connect with everybody in the world on LinkedIn, but, but I am a big emailer because even though email a lot of, a lot of times is spammy and I get things all day long that make no sense. But um, yeah, I have really honed in on my power of almost 20 years in customer service where I'm pretty good at writing an email that doesn't sound like a bot. Um, <laughs> because Stash, you know, I was in the customer service side of Stash for the first nine years. I kind of built it up. And the biggest thing we always have strived to be is not no canned responses. No, you know, always you're getting you're getting a person that's talking to you. So I do that in the sales world too. So I you know, when I find a new group or a new hotel or a new company or management company, whatever it is that I want to talk to, I'm really big on making sure they know that I'm a real person and kind of doing my research. Because there's nothing worse than when you get a cold email that's like, like I get them for, this is the most ridiculous example and you're going to laugh and you can probably cut this out if you want. <laughs> but I got an email the other day where this woman was like the CEO of this like period underwear company. <laughs> and she's like, we want to <laughs> offer these to your customers. And I was like, Girlfriend, you have done no research on what I do. <laughs> like I, we don't. We, I work with hotels. Like there's no room for that. I don't. You know. So you have to know like your audience. And so I, when I think when I emailed you, I, I honestly was like, hey, your team looks real cool. <laughs> I saw that from your site with your guys' picture. Yeah. And I was, I was like, you guys look cool. We're cool. We should be friends. Like I love independent <laughs> hotels. You've got some cool ones. Let's chat. And I'm just like to be really friendly like that. And then it just, you know, goes from there. Well, what was so cool about it is that uh, when we got that email, because obviously you get those spam emails and every LinkedIn, every time someone connects, it's like new connection. Then it's like, hey, we think you'd be a great franchisee, you know, yep. every time. In fact, I just got an email last week and someone said, we think based on your leadership experience, you'd be a great general manager at the Ribbon Chop House. <laughs> it's like what where did what? you ever see anything that made you think that someone who's yeah. never worked in a restaurant ever would be a great general manager for your restaurant that's an upgrade so anyway interviews next week so we'll see how it goes but yes. um <laughs> but your email like, he doesn't even cook at home no. come on <laughs> uh your email was so real that that's mm -hmm. what allowed me to even engage in the conversation because otherwise i would have just like you know, done like this is spam and block, you know, right. but it was right. so genuine and real. And I could see that you had actually done some due diligence and you potentially had a product that actually really made sense for us. So not right. only did you do your due diligence and you wrote a thoughtful message and you catered to my ego, but you also, <laughs> <laughs> you also actually had something that was like, well, this could be good. And then, and then I know that we got on that call cause I was in Salt mm -hmm. Lake with you and Jeff and Spencer and Breck. And that's when we started talking about like how holistically, not only would you be a great product for our properties, but there's other properties out there who are missing that digital piece that you guys right. need that like this hotel's perfect for stash, but digitally they're just not there yet. And so maybe we yes. could help get them there. So then we could all work together. Right. And from that conversation and we just, it just started to have like the synergy to it. And then I believe that's when you introduced us to Jordan Iverson, like shortly after that call, which yeah. he owns the 505 in Eugene, which we've talked about, and now the local motel and shops. And he had wanted to be on Stash, but didn't have a website, didn't have a direct booking, didn't have a PMS. Yeah. And so it was like this thing where now I feel like so many of our conversations of new clients of ours 
are coming from your guys' stash relations or we're bringing you guys new people. Like it truly is the way that business is meant to be. Mm -hmm. It is a perfect, it really is a perfect partnership. And I, the reason that it's, I think been so successful, not just in like the business side, but also, I mean, I've met you a handful of times, right? At different conferences, which, you know, goes back to the whole networking thing and the, and the whole team, Jeff and I flew out there, but also like, if you ask Jess, who, whenever I bring a hotel to her that I'm like, hey, Vibrant's going to manage this one. They're bringing it into stash. She's just immediately like, oh my gosh, yes. Like she, I mean, Jess works with a lot of hotels and she just knows that you guys have it down. Um, so not only is it so beneficial for, you know, these new hotels that are entering stash because of you and then vice versa, but we also have this just perfect working relationship where you guys understand the systems you use. Meg knows our system, like the back of her hand at this point. And it just creates this like perfect click where everything just works instantaneously. Your properties go live faster than any other hotel that we work with because we've done it so many times. And that is the bread and butter of, well, any, any company, right? Working with any kind of customer, but also just like to continue to grow our product and your product. And yeah, Jordan, it was so funny because it was like immediately after, I mean, I've been talking to him before I met you guys and he so badly wanted to do stash. I had found him through Instagram, I think his, when, um, 505 had just opened and I was like, this product is perfect. I have so many people that want to stay in Eugene, but he just had no idea what to do. He was not a hotelier. Right. He had no idea how to do the PMS system. And so then it just clicked in my head. I was like, okay, what you need is vibrant for this portion You've got the design element. You've done this. You need the the management side of it and the system side of it. And yeah, once those came together, boom, perfect. Yeah, and it's really cool because we've been working with Jordan now for a year. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, now Megan does all of the inter- and it's like I don't even I don't even have to worry about it. I'm just like, I know. Hey, Meg, here's this property, and then yeah. she connects with Jess. <laughs> Becca sends out the email to get the thousand points and do this. I get just yeah. like it's just like clockwork now. Yeah. Yeah. It's honestly so quick. Like I said, your guys, whenever we brought like central block, the only holdup was that they weren't actually open yet. Like that. <laughs> right. well, oh, I know. They could have been live in what, a week and a half or two weeks I or mean, something? I, I really could have taken them live in a day. And in fact, I actually put like the inline enrollment and Jess was like, hey, uh, your microsite's actually not ready. I was like, oh, <laughs> OK, I'm ahead of the game. So I'll take that away for now. But yeah, I I mean, we'll it, be though. live like it. tomorrow. Yeah, that's awesome. I know. If the microsite's it's, it's approved, exciting. but and that bend again, I'm telling you, you guys got to get up there. Bend we is do. the best place. So, um, yeah, it's been a really, it's been really great. And like I said, you know, we like Cody and I have text, like we yeah. all, you know what I mean? Like we're all, it just another association that we're really close with like that is the BC hotel association, which right. I have introduced you guys to yes, you guys yeah. are members as well. And it was the same thing. It was like, there are just times when associations or industry colleagues or companies or whatever it is just really click and you know us having this relationship with BCHA and more specifically with Sam their member services manager i mean we went from no hotels in in Canada you know in the beginning of 2023 we had nothing and we've now i think just had our 17th or 18th partner join wow, wow. so yeah so it's just it's one of those things with once once you get a company that is very aligned and has the same goals um, and does different things that match together. It's magic. Well, and what was so cool is that we had that call with me, you, Jeff, and Breck and Spencer, and then you guys were out in Southern Utah, like I want to say within like 30 days or so from that yeah, point, we came out, you know, yeah. like really showed up in a, in a real way and allowed us to build that relationship. And then part of us going to the hospitality show was knowing that you guys were going to be there. And if you're watching this, you can see all of Audrey's badges there over her right shoulder. And it was so nice because conferences are great and you learn a lot. Mm -hmm. But I've been in sales for so much of my life. Like the last thing I want to do is try and make new friends from from scratch. (laughs) I just don't enjoy it. But if Audrey's with you, you don't have to. Well, I turned 40 this year. You're not there yet, but... Once you hit that, you're like, eh, I don't really need to do this. Anymore. Yeah, but you're so good at it. Audrey introduced me to all kinds of people at the hospitality <laughs> show. And then what's so funny is the world. So we just I just had another guest on the podcast. He said the same thing. The world is so big and yet so small. Yeah. So we're at this cocktail hour at the hospitality show. And Audrey's introducing us to all the people from Canada. And then um, somehow some gentleman who was going to build a hotel in Albuquerque 
ended up a part of our conversation. Oh, yeah. And then turns out it was Charmaine's cousin from Hotel yeah. Zaz. And so yeah. then we FaceTimed Charmaine and we're like, woo! You know, yeah. like, what are the odds? It is just, uh, you know, it's, it's a crazy world. We have world. a picture from the, like, professional photographer at the show when all of us are standing there. And he's got the FaceTime. That's and right. In the FaceTime <laughs> in the photo right. that was, like, all over their website. Uh, so uh, speaking of, are you going to go to the hospitality show in uh, San Antonio? No. Um... Frank might go because Frank lives in Waco, so he oh, may okay. go. Um, this is it, October. I, I wish they would have stuck with June. Yeah, well, October and also is such a San, heavy conference month everywhere. San Antonio so, over Vegas, like, also, yeah, you know, yeah, come on, I know. So no, because I have like three other things I have to do between October and September. I have like three conferences I have to go to, and I was like, well, I'm gonna pick and choose. I liked that one, but it's so huge. It was too big. Um, I mean, like too big. So it's it was great because yeah. you guys were there, and so in that way, it brought a lot of value. But yeah. if you wouldn't have been there, it honestly would have been a waste of time. It was yeah, just I think, way too. I massive. agree. I think, and also it was their first year, which seems kind of crazy for as big as AHLA is, but um. Yeah, I felt the same way. We really cater towards those smaller conferences, um, especially, and and also we really cater towards the uh, ind- more independent focused ones because obviously that's what we do. Right. We don't work with any brands um, or chains, and that one was a mix, but way pretty heavy branded, which you know I expected. So well, we it was still a nice got one to go, but we got to get I you would... guys that buy tax still. I still think I like know, the buy tech independent is the best the best event you guys could go to i know i keep seeing it all over every time you guys go and then like different people posting about it i'm like i need to get more well and i'm going um in like how long meg um you're going the week of the 18th of yeah. august and i think that is the uh that's the independent one it is the independent mm-hmm. one yes yeah, so i'm going Where's it, at? it is in amalia island in florida amalia. amelia how do you say it amelia island yeah. yeah oh my gosh that's right by my sister so that would no way. Well, there you go. It's the 18th through the 21st. So I'll have to follow up with you after and let you know what I think. But I mean, yeah. that's all independent hotel owners. It's like a perfect place for you guys to be. I'm curious, yeah. um, since you do go to so many conferences, which one do you think is the best? So if like the listeners, if you're an independent hotel operator yeah. and you're thinking about going to a conference or two this year, what would you recommend since you've got so much exposure to different ones? Hands down, independent log- um, independent lodging Congress, ILC. Oh, really? And we go every year. They ILC, have, you said? ILC, yep. Independent Lodging Congress. Uh, um, or, yeah, just ILC is what they call it. It is 100% independent focused. Their, uh, their conferences are so much fun. When we, the San Francisco one last year, they had, like, um, pets come, like, dogs come, and you could just pet dogs all day. It was so incredible. They, yeah, it was really fun. It was like the... Happy hour was also like grab a drink and then play with a little puppy. Oh, so great. That sounds amazing. Um, they also are very focused on like dresses you want to dress. Like they're big on ten- like cool tennis shoes. And like, so you don't have to be all like suit and tie. It's very casual. Um, but it is. So Jeff actually spoke on a panel last year, which is why we were, we, we've gone the last couple of years, but um, and it, and loyalty um, panel, which was great. But they are, yeah, it is all independents. Um, there are, you know, different management companies there. There are different products, obviously. But they're very hyper-focused on not selling. So they don't really have, like, they have some sponsors that have, like, a booth that just has, like, collateral and stuff on it if you want to grab it. But there's nobody sitting behind a booth being like, come talk to me. Um, which is great because I am not a big booth fan. Does that shit um, ever work anyways? Like, all anyone's doing is trying to, like, putt the putt or make the shot. Like, right. I always like an HLA. Does. What do we do? We went around and grabbed pens from everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like the going. games, you know, but yeah, that's about yeah. it. So we, yeah, it's really great. Um, Their one in October is in San Francisco again. Yeah. It says um, Salcedo, California. Sal- Salcedo. Yeah. So it's actually at Cavallo <laughs> Point, which is like right at the, I know. <laughs> You're good with pronunciation. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, man. <laughs> It's uh yeah, it's right there at the Golden Gate Bridge. It's beautiful. Oh, that's cool. And that's really two new partners that we just brought in um both the Presidio properties that are also right by there, right by the um other side of the bridge. So it's nice because I get to kind of go and visit our partners and then I'm sure Jeff and I will be there because we I actually have a call with them next week to chat. But um yeah, it's a phenomenal one. By far my absolute favorite for independence. Oh wow, and it is not uh not cheap. No, it's not. That's the one. That's again. That's, <laughs> that's why we put our our uh, 
we put a lot of our eggs into that basket. Yeah, because it is it's such a powerful. We, I mean, every year we have walked away with significant partnership opportunities. Um, the Presidio properties last year, a lot of every year we've we've partnered with hotels that we've met when we're there. Do you think it would and, make sense for us as vibrant? Yes, I actually really do because there are. Let me, when I talk to her next week, um, Shannon is there. I don't know. I think she's she does all the. I don't know. They their team is so amazing. They put together these phenomenal ones. They they do like four or five a year, but this is their big one. Um, they have like a tech focused one. They have like a. They just finished one. It might have been last week in Asheville. Um, that's Asheville, not Asheville. <laughs> <you> know, so. <laughs> uh, but I'll get more info and tell her to just kind of reach out to you and let you see. Even it's, I mean, it's good to just kind of have an idea of it. Yeah. But yeah, it's a it's a really really cool conference. By far my favorite. It is one thousand eight hundred ninety five dollars for an all access pass. Wow, it is. But yes. it is it October. Is. Uh, 20th okay. through the 24th. So it's like, we were just saying we should go somewhere in October. So maybe we, maybe we just go to that. Yeah. yeah. And it, they do so many, it, the one thing that's cool about it is like, there's a welcome reception. That's always at like a local last year. It was at this really cool bar. They do like walks every morning. They sometimes they do yoga. They have really cool breakouts and happy hour. Like it's a lot. It's, it's a lot that you get for, yeah. And everything is like, they're really big on sustainability. Like they partner with everybody water, I think is what it's called. And like, there's no bot plastic bottle. Like, it's just a really cool, really, really cool um, conference. It's worth sure. You I had me at, at it, petting you know, puppies. Like, I know. I yeah. If I can Megan go pet sold. puppies all day, I'm in. We took a... Right? Uh, I know. You can, come, you can come be my date. Well, Cody, okay. you can stay home. Okay. <laughs> you can stay and watch the kids. We, uh... We you just stay had... home and I'll tell Jeff he can stay home and Megan and I <laughs> Yes. Uh, Deal. Actually, okay, you guys go and Jeff and I will go to Vegas. Okay, fine. You'd yeah. rather do that. Yeah, yes, there you 100%. go. <laughs> uh, so Cash just had his birthday on Wednesday. And so we took him to dinner in the middle of the week and we're like, what do you want to do? And he just wanted to go to the puppy store and pet puppies. And so we went to the pet puppy store and pet puppies for, I don't know, an hour or so. Yeah. Oh and God. you normally have to pay like $5 to pet a puppy. But Cash being the salesperson that he is, I don't know where he gets uh -huh. it from is like telling the guy it's his birthday. And so the guy's like just letting him have any dog he wants. And oh. then of course he found one he wanted to buy and it's a puppy store. So, and in inflation, you know, stuff's expensive. Uh -huh. yeah, right. So it's like $3,600 right. for this very, very cute dog named Roger. And Roger. Oh, and, Roger. <laughs> and my son goes up to me. He's like, Hey, what, do, I, what's it? What, what kind of deal can you make me? He's like, I don't know. I might <laughs> May, like maybe we could do 3000 and he comes over and he's like talking to me and my dad and he goes back over. He goes, what if it's 2800 cash? And the guy's like, oh, I could text someone like maybe, maybe I could do that. And then he's like, well, can I get a leash? And he's like, oh, you know, he goes, I'll give you a caller too. And he goes, well, what about a leash? And he's like, I think we can do that. He's like, well, what about a harness? <laughs> and so like my little eight year old son is just hard negotiating with this guy. And he was like, come back on Friday. If he's still here, then I can probably make that deal for you. Oh my gosh. I love it. I'm going to hire him in 15. How no. Long, yeah. how oh, eight. He was just over the moon. He was like, dad, how good did I negotiate? Like, am I the well, best? I'm like what eight year old is having a conversation with an employee? Like and just feeling so comfortable, like so confident. independent yeah, of so me. Funny, yeah. I didn't even say it. And the guy had remembered him because we'd gone there before because we love puppies. And every time cash is there, like, what kind of cash deal can you give me? And <laughs> so funny. It's so good. He's going to be so good when he buys his first car. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's like so, my I dad. love that. So my kids would be like, but mom. Just don't, can you just put it on your credit card? Then we eat Starbucks when we leave. And then what about Chick fil A for dinner? That's what my kids would say. Hey, but they are flying on a plane solo. So that's true. So, you know, we have gotten to yes. that level of independence. How yeah, long is she gone for? She's gone for a week and then she'll fly home. Same thing. My sister will bring her to the airport. I'll pick her up here. So yeah, a whole week. She's with my niece who is five going on 25. Oh. And um, so she's, she's like, man. She really like gets really upset, like and just kind of throws a fit. And I was like, "Uh huh, yeah, you were five once too." And guess what? You were the exact same kid. <laughs> like, so welcome to a dose of reality of what it was like for me oh, seven or eight years ago. <laughs> that's too good. So what? Uh, anything new or exciting with Stash that you feel like would be good for our listeners to know? Yeah, we are. So I don't know. It's been another crazy year. We've partnered with some phenomenal properties. Um, I think we've partnered with almost 40. I should have looked before. Um, we really shifted our focus this year 
um, to, so as you know, within the last, you know, in the last couple of years, we didn't before COVID, well, actually before like 2018, we didn't really partner with smaller properties. We right. were very heavily focused on over a hundred keys, usually part of a larger management company, not a brand or chain, but just like, you know, large groups of properties, which a lot of those have dis- disbanded or yeah. have branded a lot of their hotels. So those aren't really um, sort of as relevant as they used to be. But we, in COVID, we really opened up to all types of properties because we started to realize that there was this surge of these phenomenal, sometimes some of them alternative alternative accommodations, we call it, which I think of like Zion Wildflower, right? Yeah. Who thinks to put a covered wagon? People freaking right. love it. Like it's the yeah. coolest thing ever. <laughs> um, so we opened up a lot to that and brought in, obviously, your guys' properties are at the top of that list. Um, and then all of the other just, you know, glamping or... You know, we have one we have one in California that's made out of shipping containers, like just really high end design little properties. This year we shifted our fo- focus again kind of back to key markets. So Chicago, L.A., Miami, um, where and a, a lot of those markets saw and are still coming back from the pandemic. Right? I was going to say, so do you guys believe then that metropolitan travel is back? I do. I think. West Coast is going to be the last. Um, San Francisco, 100% is going to be the last to recover, which is in, and that's what we're seeing, but it's also in every thing you read right now about travel. Um, but it is coming back. And it's nice because we're getting to a point where those hotels that survived, um, that didn't brand, didn't sell. I don't know if you've seen San Francisco, like some of the biggest Hiltons and Ritz Carlton's, like the Asset owners just walked away. They're just, yeah. and, you know, it's crazy. So yeah. probably have homeless we, people living them now. Probably, especially in San Francisco. Yeah. Um. So like Jeff and I were in California two or three weeks ago, um, meeting with hotels in LA, which has always been um, a tough market for us, and which is weird because we really have a lot of partners and a lot of members on the West Coast. But LA is a constant turnover type city, similar to San Francisco. Um, and so, you know, we'd have a partner that was really strong and then they'd sell or they'd brand. Yeah. Um, and then through COVID, that city was just kind of a hard one to gauge. So we not stayed away, but just sort of didn't focus our time there. So we were in LA, um, you know, Pat's working hard on Miami. DC is another one. We just brought in a partner in DC, which is huge. We haven't been in DC in like eight years. We had wow. a partner early on there that was phenomenal, but um, a lot of turnover there. Again, another market that's really hard. And so... We have part, we brought on more keys, less partners this year than we had at this point, but more keys, which is really important because some of those larger hotels, as we know, larger hotels generate different revenue than smaller properties, but there's a need for all of those, which is a really cool part of the program that I'm thrilled we've seen the light on in the last five years or so, which is you need to have something for everyone. Um, and that is what has catapulted the program into 300 and I think we're at like 340 partner hotels now. Wow. wow. That's amazing. Well, what's interesting too, is I feel like those real, real, real quality independents are even more few and far between, which probably yes. even makes Stash that much more powerful because the branded properties, knowing the need for it, have gone after them so aggressively that so many now are a tribute or an autograph or a tapestry. Uh, And so I think that to find a really unique, large scale independent is a much, I mean, even think about AutoCamp. AutoCamp was this amazing independent billion dollar brand that is now a part of Hilton. What? Yep. Yeah. I didn't know that. So now if you search Hilton for like Springdale, for example, it shows AutoCamp basically the same as it shows DeNovo and Cliff Rose. Interesting. Yep. And you know what's really crazy about that is, you know, I, t- I talk to hotels obviously all day and consumers who you're targeting, like you want guests to stay with you, they don't even know the difference anymore. They don't yeah. even understand. I, yeah, mean, I look at hotels all day and I sometimes get fooled until I get to a booking engine that it's even part of Hilton or Marriott. And yep. that's kind of what these hotels that are soft branding to, you know, tributes or autographs or whatever are hoping is that you don't really understand until you get to the booking engine that's part of Marriott. Marriott and Hilton and all those scream to a lot of people. That's why they have like 30 billion members, right? But there's this whole subset group of people, stash members specifically, that really want to be able to tell 
like where is an easy way to tell what is an independent hotel? Yeah. And so like we say, like, come to the stash site. Like we only have 100% fully independent hotels that we work with. Like well, we do not work with soft brands. And they want that quiet reassurance that someone's vetted them because that's also the risk true. you run yeah. of a true independent without any sort of vetting or backing is yeah. you just don't know what you're going to get, you know? Right. And you don't, and you know, there's not, there are other quality, there are other markers of independent hotels, right? Um, but a lot of the other groups that work with independent hotels don't have the same quality standards that Stash does. And, you know, oftentimes we get asked, like, why don't you just let in any independent hotel that wants to work with you? Like, don't they all need help? Don't they all want this program? Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, we love being able to say that we are the top rated program for highly rated independent hotels. Like, every hotel is different, right? Like, I have dwellings on my slide deck. When I talk to a hotel, yeah. like, dwellings is right there next to HK, which is in Belize. That is um, overwater bungalows. And then next to that is Chateau Deer Valley. I mean, like, all completely different types of properties but all the highest rated in their markets, the best types of properties. And where else do you find that unless you have a company, a site, a program that only works with those? Oh, you couldn't. Um, you couldn't. That's find, us. Yeah, you couldn't find yeah. it. And the dwellings just uh, open their pool. So very cool. Like one of the best <laughs> sunset pools yeah, Instagram. you could ever get. Uh, and remember you and Jeff, we showed you guys auto camp before it was open. Remember? Yeah, I know. Remember, we remember we drove by. Jeff's like, "What is this?" We're like, "That's going to be auto camp." He's like, "What?" Yeah, he couldn't have been more against it. Um, no. Okay, Audrey. Well, if someone is interested in stash and they're listening to this and they've got an independent property and they're like, the light bulb yeah. just went off, like, aha, of course. Uh, how should yes. they best get a hold of you guys? Yeah. So if you go to our site, which is just stashrewards.com, at the bottom there's a part for if you're a hotelier, if you have questions. You can email me directly anytime. It's just Audrey at stashrewards.com. Um, we have a LinkedIn page, we have social media. Um, and we also have an entire site just dedicated to hoteliers that want information, which is just hoteliers.stashrewards.com. And that kind of tells you, you know, shows you a lot about what our program is, what we offer. Um, you know, our biggest thing is OTA shift. We know that, I mean, I know that your property is the same thing. It's like, if you can get somebody to never book on an OTA again, mm -hmm. then you've just made your entire reason for existing, right? Well, <laughs> so and also we, who the stash customer is, right? Because not yeah. only are OTAs taking a, a larger percent of your, your income, but the guest is not the same as a direct guest or stash guest. Exactly. Yeah. Stash members tend to skew higher income earning, highly educated. They're a little bit older, which is um, nice because they're less price sensitive. Yeah. And they are looking for that like unique boutique experience rather than just like putting their head in a bed at a Hampton Inn, which who wants to do that when you're in Zion? Like, why would you want to stay at the Hampton Inn, right? <laughs> Sorry to the Hamptons, but the world. But Sorry, like, why would you not want to stay at Bungler Dwelling? Yeah, when you're 100%. In that area? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it'd be cool too, is if you want to send me the deck, I could even put that in the show notes to make it super easy for people. Yeah. So th throw me that deck. I'll put that in there. And I, I wasn't sure if you'd want your email or not, but I'll put your email in there as well. Yeah, um, we're so thankful for the stash partnership and for you guys and your team. Uh, everyone I've met that's a part of stash is equally amazing. So thank you so much for helping support our properties and for taking the time to be on this with us today. Of course, anytime. And thank you guys for continuing to bring us amazing properties. So I can't wait to see what you do next and how we work together. All right. Thanks, Audrey. Yeah. Thanks, Audrey. All right. See ya.